Okay, here we go. I'm making piles of gray. Piles of gray. Are you going to work in black and white? <laughs> Bella. Are you going to do this black and white photo in black and white? Oh, awesome. If you're uh, here for vampire night, for drawing vampires, I thought I my email subject line, Dracula, was pretty good. Um, but uh, we're going to get started in a second. Uh, we're just going to let the room fill up, drawing some of our, uh, not our favorite vampires, but... <laughs> Uh, speak but, uh, for yourself. Who could be better than Bella Lugosi? Bella well, Lugosi is the best. No, I would say we're not drawing some of our favorites. I mean, like, you know, like we've got Twilight in there. Wow. <laughs> You're welcome. But you don't yeah, have to. Cassandra, it's just for you. If you didn't show up after I put him in there, uh, <laughs> oh, that would have been. I was, I was on the next flight to Richmond. I, was I just thought it was a good balance because I was also thinking of Christopher Lee. Like he was, he was like a Dracula for ten years. Oh yeah, he's Christopher Lee was in two hundred and eighty movies. <laughs> this, the man this is clear epic. though. Anybody wondering? I was the person who pushed for Edward Cullen. <laughs> I thought about it and I was like, oh, I don't know if they'd want to do it. And then you push for it. And I was like, oh, I can do this. I was like, we're having a vampire night. We're not doing Twilight. Like, <laughs> I mean, it, I, I was amazed you didn't you didn't go, uh, Cassandra, you didn't go immediately to interview with a, a vampire. With well, you know what? It was because I hated painting Tom Cruise when we had well, yeah, Top Gun night. So I was avoiding You know, I wasn't going to choose Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> you have, should have more confidence in me than that. Yeah. Uh, nothing wrong with Tom Cruise, but he's just really hard to paint, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, one all, roads, all roads lead to Tom Cruise. I'm going to start the show. <laughs> he made a very pretty vampire. Very good. Hey, everybody. Welcome uh, to Illustration Isolation. You've heard the song, you're in the right room. And is that sharing to me? It's not. Give it, a re give it another try. Oh, that's brutal. We're episode 195 or something. Wow. Yeah. We've been trapped in this Zoom room for 195 episodes. Not letting me share it to me. It's not letting you share it. Give it, a, give it up one more try. That's so three times. Hold give on. Give it a second. Double uh, click on it. Give me a quick. There you go. There you go. All right, is that sharing now? Yep, it looks great. That was so weird. I just hit um, preview and it didn't, it went straight there and I didn't even hit share. Anyway, tonight, uh, welcome everybody. I'm here with uh, Bill Cove and Cassandra Lewis Kim and we are drawing vampires. And um, <laughs> I'm going to give the credits where credit due here. Far Left, that's one of my father's pieces that he did for a book cover for Bram Stoker's Dracula. Um, that's Mark English. And then Chris Payne, top right. He did that in here last year. Um, that was like a 40 minutes of Chris's life. <laughs> that's just absolutely amazing. Amazing. And, and then the piece below is a Thomas Blackshear. It's a stamp for the US Postal Department. Um, and um, he did, he did um, Frankenstein. He did um, the Mummy. He did Werewolf. He did uh, obviously Dracula, and then uh, Phantom of the Opera. Um, fantastic group of stamps that he did. So, here's your challenge. All you got to do is one do one that good. <laughs> uh, which, that, that's going to be a problem. Trust me. <laughs> Uh, so um, first up tonight is uh, this is what uh, Chris and uh, this is who Chris and um, Thomas drew was Bella, Bella Lugosi as Dracula. Um, the second second 20 minute pose is uh, Gary Oldman as uh, Bram Stoker's um, Dracula played Dracula, uh, which is. Is that like I think he won he won an Academy Award for his. The costume won Academy Award in that film. I mean, it was absolutely beautiful. Um, 
I, if, if you're, if you don't want to draw a figure, just draw his hand. If you don't want to draw, mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. is some great hand right there. Mm-hmm. Um, Gary Oldman is like the master of, of uh, uh, disguise as an actor. I mean, there's so many things that parts that he's played that you can't even tell it's him. Um, and then uh, Wesley Snipes and uh, as Blade. And we may have those out of order, Timmy, but uh, okay. no, that's right. It doesn't matter. And then, oh, you're that's, right. That's, that's that's Timmy's call because he wanted me to put Wesley in there. And um, this was uh, Cassandra's and Timmy's call. I'm not going <laughs> to say who, you know. Yeah, Cassandra sent the photos. I was like, no, Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> So, it was uh, a mistake on my part. I apologize. I don't think they sent the photo. You said, what about Edward C- uh, Kulin? And I was like, I had to look it up to see who it was. And then, Edward Kulin. <laughs> is that who it is? is trying to, no, it, it, Colin. Colin, so you're, excuse so you're me. Trying to, you're trying to make it seem like you haven't read the Twilight series. <laughs> um, yeah, I hope I can pull that off. Let's, let's, see, how, let's see how well I can <laughs> treat them all. Yeah. Um, all right. Don't worry, we all so, know your team, Edward. If you're new to us uh, tonight, uh, we're going to be doing those three poses. You have your option. Uh, you can do either or both or either of these, the last two. Um, we got 40 minutes for our last pose. You can work on one a little bit longer. The first ones are 20 minutes. In between poses, please post your work to uh, hashtag illustration isolation. And at the end of the night, we'll go through and look at all the work. And we'll be talking about what we're doing and your Feel free to control the conversation by asking us questions. Timmy will be looking for questions in the Discord. So I uh, I dropped the link to the photo reference. So if you're looking for it, grab it from the chat. Um, I am also going to drop a link to our Discord server. If you want to join in on the chat in a more active way, become part of the community, it, I really recommend it. Um, if if uh, if Discord's not your speed, if you haven't heard of Discord, just hang out with us on Zoom. You're all good, and you can use the Q and A to ask questions. Are you all ready to draw? Yeah. Yeah, we've been we've been in here drawing. So I do love somebody said. I thought you said it was Bella Lagosti. <laughs> <laughs> Which is hilarious. Ghost C. Ghost C. Yeah, Lagosti. That's super. That's Lagosti. a mean name. Yeah. Well, and did you see Peter above is like totally yeah. on theme because he is from the part of Oregon where there was a bunch of Twilight filming? Yep. I I lived in Oregon for quite a while as well. And I lived there during the max, like the most hyped era like 2009 to, to 2011 oh that is just like peak twilight just yeah glistening your skin's like diamonds <laughs> skin like diamonds yeah now are you guys fans of both the movie and the books or just the movie or just the books oh well, don't be mistaken i'm a fan of neither <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i like i totally read them my uh one of my good friends is a librarian was a librarian for her high school and she was like i don't know what's with these books but i thought i'd read them and we passed them all around so for me it's all tied into really fond memories of like when i was living with two of my best friends and so yeah we like mock it love it yeah we're okay. there I've, I have gone to, uh, there's a local theater in Kansas City, uh, in North KC, that um, I want to say almost every year they host a screening of the movie, and then they hire like two or three comedians to sit in the front row and do Mystery Science Theater. Yes. I love that. And <laughs> it's, I think it's the best material for that type. I mean, it, it's so campy. Um, oh, totally, totally. We that, love it for all of that. Yeah, it it's one of the more like modern movies that's like prime for that, you know? Mm-hmm. Anyways, I just want to remind the audience, if you do have technical questions, um, feel free to post them in the Q&A or use a uh, Discord. Um, 
you know, uh, just ask questions. Uh, we might only have Bill and Cassandra for a little bit tonight. So get your cue cues out of the way with them early. You might get stuck. It might be the John and Timmy. John, you and I have, we've talked about the possibility of this happening for a long time. Sorry, sorry. Cassandra thinks her children are more important, so. Yeah, God. I get that. Unbelievable. You no. know, I thought you were said Sterling was gonna show up. Like what happened? Well, it's all good. We've, John and I have prepared for this moment for a long time. <laughs> you have you have like robot versions of us somewhere, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just I'll yeah. just get Dolly. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let me fire up mid journey. No, I'm kidding. Um no, no I <laughs> I'm just kidding. That wouldn't work. No personality. I can't talk to that mid journey about a uh, twilight. So um, yeah, but do ask questions. I want to hear them. Oh, can I tell you guys about the ultimate like mom moment I had this week? Sure. I would love to hear that. So I was invited to be on this like music podcast that's local. It's it's called like Shaka Session Live and they get a local band out and then they also like to highlight a local artist. So um, I dropped artwork off to, to be on the show and, it, and it's like live on YouTube. And um, so they were highlighting it and they're like, well, we would love for you to come out and just hear some good music. And, you know, you can be on camera if you want. And I was like, oh, I don't need to be on camera. But I, I decided to sketch the band while I was, while I was there. And so I did a, a quick sketch of just like the guy singing. And, and then I was like, oh, you know, maybe I should just give it to them because, you know, this is kind of their thing and they do it all for free. And so I did it and I pulled out the sketch after it was over and I signed it. And then I looked in the back and on the back of my sketch was a drawing my daughter had done of Pikachu on the potty looking at a cell phone. <laughs> And she already knew I was giving it to her. So I, I like passed it off. But then I was like, sorry about the drawing on the back. I didn't realize my kid had sketched on that page. That's, did it, That's did awesome. It, did it read well that it was Pikachu on the toilet? Yes. I mean, it definitely looks like Pikachu on a potty reading a cell phone. <laughs> I mean that's a that's that's impressive. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, 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 how how old is your daughter? She's five. Wow, that's amazing. I like and it, it. And it. And it and they could uh, be that have that much of a, a narrative in their work. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. But like I don't know if my cell phone will show up on camera. We'll see. It takes a minute to. I yeah. saw the post that you you uh, there it you is. Hey there, hold it. It yeah, let me let me highlight it for people because this is important. Oh <laughs> so that cool. was on <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. That reads that reads really well. Yeah, yeah. So like you definitely knew what it was. John, your drawing is just fantastic. Thank you. Wow. Yeah, way to get that done in two minutes. Yeah, I, we. I was kind of panicking about how bad I was this morning. So I started about, well, what time did I get on here, Timmy? Uh, about 20 of, and I had been. I worked on it for, I guess probably, tw was, I'm probably 25 minutes into it right now. It has a real painting kind of quality to it so. that's good because it's a real painting this happens to be a pastel painting do you guys have a favorite vampire movie oh good question <laughs> love it for first bio with I do, but it's it's really offbeat. It's um, I think I, I think I if I I don't know if I'm going to get the title right. Is it Breaking Dawn, the Twilight? <laughs> <laughs> That's a secret. 
Um, let me think about it for a second. Is it Dracula dead and loving it? No. I think my favorite one is uh, Dust Till Dawn, the Tarantino one. That's pretty good. Yeah, George Clooney. George Clooney and uh, Tom Hayek. Yeah, I have to go with a What We Do in Shadows. And the wolf, what's his name? I can't think of it. Harvey Keitel. Oh, yeah, Keitel's in it. Yep. Yep, that's my favorite one. Um, Clooney had a neck tattoo in that. Yeah. I remember thinking, huh. I remember thinking neck tattoos. That could see, that would be nice. <laughs> that's going to age well. Well, you know what? Nobody ever tells you, though, that no, no matter, you know, like, even if you get the neck tattoo like George Clooney, that you're still not going to be George Clooney. <laughs> yeah, that's that's tough. It's the harsh reality that everyone has to face. <laughs> John, did you figure out the name of your... Uh, I, I think it's called... Um, I don't know if it's The Kiss or The Vampire's Kiss. It stars oh, Nicholas Cage. Vampire's Kiss. Vampire's Kiss. With Nicholas Cage. Yeah, as the book editor in New York who goes nuts. Um, yeah. That's a great movie. I love that movie. Jennifer Beals and... Um, oh my god, he's so good at that. He's just, yeah. And you're uh, big. You're uh, uh, Timmy's a big Nicolas Cage fan. I think Nicolas Cage is one of the best actors of like the modern era. <laughs> uh, I I don't disagree with you. I I can I, think of I, I do some, some I of his not as successful movies like Racing with the Moon. He and yeah. Sean Penn. That is an unbelievable movie. Mm -hmm. yeah. He always swings for the fences, it like no matter what. We, uh, me and Gianna the other night, she this is a while ago, but she was like, We should let's watch National Treasure. And <laughs> he just, I just love him, he's so great. <laughs> but there's this scene where he reads a riddle from a piece of paper, and it's so obviously a riddle. And Nicolas Cage just goes, It's a riddle. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like he's so weird i love it yeah yeah i think i think um the weatherman that's not a vampire movie no but it's a nicholas cage movie nicholas cage movie. but it's such a um i thought it was such an underrated um movie um and i i I love him in Leaving Las Vegas, although that's a hard movie to watch. Oh, oh yeah. It's a great movie, though. But it, oh, yeah. is, it is dark. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it I don't think I'll stressed me out watching that movie. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, I'm looking up just imagery for your Nicolas Cage vampire movie, John, and that is wild. Have you not seen it? No, I've, never I've never seen, seen it. it. And it looks absurd. It looks it like... Is. And it's it's it is really good. Just for I gotta share it because it's just See, so wild. This is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes, That's brilliant. It's gotta be this is a comedy, right? Yeah. Well, dark. Um dark, yeah. yeah. You know, he had uh he, he he thinks he's becoming a vampire. Right. And, and I'm not going to get into too much, but my favorite thing is it's like he's living in New York City and like takes on all these starts taking on attributes of the vampire. And so he starts sleeping underneath his couch. He turns his couch over and it's like he's sleeping in a coffin. And there's oh a handful of just really strange things. Uh that he does to take on the attributes of a, uh, a vampire. And fighting, fighting women at nightclubs uh, was his kind of his, his downfall. <laughs> As it should be. Yeah. Right. yeah. And it, it, it's an 80s movie. Too. Yeah. I was gonna say, it definitely looks like a young Nicolas Cage. Yeah. Have you seen, Timmy, have you seen Racing with the Moon? No, I that's when you got to check out. He and Sean Penn are amazing. At it. 
It's kind of quiet compared to a lot of their movies. But that's what makes it so damn good. Yeah. One of the things. I I, I like an actor that I'm just like, I have no idea what they're going to do. Yeah. And he's your man. <laughs> it also seems like nothing is above him. Um, on the topic of, of of dark stuff, though, I've been watching the uh, I've been like hate watching the Dahmer show. Oh, like I think I hate watch it. Like I don't like it, but I'm I'm watching it, and I think it's weird because I watched it and I'm like halfway through it, and I think it's all the critiques of it I think are correct in that it's like it's like like do we need to like you know do do we need this do we need this you know (laughs) but then then like this morning I like got an email for like a movie trailer and it's like a Timothy Chalamet cannibal movie and you're like but it's like a like a rom-com you're like what are we going through a cannibal like are cannibals becoming cool <laughs> i'm just like what i like the new it outer vampires inner cannibals <laughs> yeah that totally it feels like they're like this is the next twilight like franchise <laughs> and it's like i don't know that that's the direction we need to go in <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't need to be a thing oh, we got a, we have a uh, a new uh, yeah. participant here, Mr. Bonilla. Oh, awesome. I'm here, right? This is hey, great. Ray. I, I'm here. Are you here to talk about cannibals? Because that's where <laughs> we are. <laughs> wow. Okay. So we're we're starting off hot. Yeah. It's uh well, I hear it's the it's in, you know. It's like the new teletubbies. Oh yeah. Perfect <laughs> it's exactly what I thought it was like the new teletubbies, you know. Yeah. I, um jump straight to blade i like it oh wait that's right we're not um no, you, you check the website here no follow your heart right okay do do commit to commit to uh blade um oh man i like that bella Lugosi thing but i i've never actually done a painting of wesley snipes before how's, how's everyone doing doing well bill how you feeling yeah but I'm okay. I'm I'm hanging in there. So you've only so basically you've only done one piece instead of four. I only, <laughs> that's right. But Bill's, yeah. a little, Bill's a little under the weather tonight. So I you. know. Yeah, I saw that. Well, I hope you feel better, man. And I may only. I stopped my. Go ahead. No, I, I was gonna say I, if I stubbed my toe, I you know. I basically use it as an excuse not to stream. So I uh, commend you for powering you through. Is that, that why, that why my brush? My brush last night. <laughs> God, but we're having some. Uh, Tyler's moving to move to a new studio, so we've been um, or to a, his own studio, and so we've uh, and he hosts the the stream. So we've uh, been having some internet connectivity things issues. So that's that's a problem when you're streaming. Yeah, yeah, that's a problem. So we'll we'll uh hopefully next week. Hopefully next week. We were set to go this week, but uh you know, you know how it is. If the internet don't work, it don't work, you know. So true. I am uh I'm preparing our news right now. Uh but Ray, before we get to that, we were just talking about favorite vampire movies. You got one? I feel like you're you know, I'm thinking, chamber. yeah, I, I gotta say, and this is totally a product of my time, Blade Two. Oh, nice! That's a really good one. That's Th- an- the one with uh, Guillermo del Toro d- directed it, right? Is that the one he directed? I have no idea. Yeah. Really? Isn't there a new Blade series coming out? Or- yeah, I heard it was going to be. I was curious if they were if Wesley Snipes was going to be in or not. No, it's um, the actor who played in. Um, I won't be able to think of the movie. I'm sorry. Mahersha Ali? Yes. Oh, yeah, he's great. 
I'm not familiar. I'm not familiar with that actor. You would. Oh, you would totally he's recognize cool. him. He's been in so much. Okay. He was in that movie with Victor um, Morrison that was, um, he played the musician. Well, that, that narrows the it green down. Book? Uh, no. I, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it, oh, it's old. <laughs> <laughs> I thought somebody it was else might, me. It was the, the I thought book. somebody else's memory might be better than mine. Uh, yeah. Okay, are you guys That's ready? For, are you guys ready for news? I guess so. Do we have any choice? You don't. <laughs> I I spent fifteen minutes rounding all of this up, so we're not canceling news. <laughs> all right, here we go. What Hoping everybody heard my new sound effect. Kind of. That was pretty bad, actually. It was pretty bad? All yeah. Right. It was just all garbled. Okay. Well, to the news. Cassandra. Soup. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> Thank you. All right. All right. Soup. Soup at the art museum. Okay. Um, on Friday. This is not last Friday, the Friday before. In room 43 of London's National Gallery. Two young women opened cans of tomato soup and threw their contents onto Vincent Van Gogh's famous painting, Sunflowers. The soup throwers donned shirts displaying the logo of Just Stop Oil, an activist group that has been staging nonviolent demonstrations across the United Kingdom, Kingdom to protest the production of fossil fuels. Um, as the soup hit the painting, someone shrieked and another person exclaimed, this is the funniest part, Oh my gosh. <laughs> the two women then sat down on the floor and glued their hands to the wall below the painting as a bystander called for security. Um, and then uh, one of the activists began to speak to the room, essentially uh, running through um, the explaining their, Bill said it best, I think. I guess it was like a manifesto. It wasn't a manifesto, but explaining why they did it. Um, which was to protest oil and uh, draw attention from the media and the wider public to pay attention to the fact that the British government is about to hand out 100 licenses for new oil and gas projects. So that's the story. Um, an important detail of the story is um, nothing was damaged um, during this event. Um, they had researched that the painting was covered and they actually switched supposedly from a Andy Warhol painting to the Vincent Van Gogh because they confirmed that the Vincent Van Gogh was protected. So that's the news. Um, it's kind of a hot topic one. So proceed, everyone. What are your thoughts? I just that's think that, for... oh, sorry, go ahead, Ray. No, go ahead. Go, go ahead, Cassandra. Oh, I just think that it feels mean to pick Vincent Van Gogh. Like, I know they were more like, oh, it's preserved better. But I just feel like he he's a guy who just never got a lot of attention in his life. And now he's kind of getting that attention. Like, go for somebody like Salvador Dali, who if no one recognized him. He'd pull out a bell and ring it so everyone could get it. Like, he could get everybody's attention. Just go pour it on a Salvador Dali. And even to like back it up further, because Cassandra, you you sent me this when it first happened. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I, I think I texted that exactly to you. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I was like, these morons, what were they thinking? Their lives are ruined. Um, at the time, I think everybody thought that the paintings were going to, like, was the painting was going to be damaged. And now I'm like, it feels like a misguided mm -hmm. however I've since read a lot of compelling things that say like that's drawing a lot of attention to these licenses that are being given out so I'm I'm kind of torn on the whole thing because there was nothing damaged it makes it a little less you know I don't know I don't want to upset people with my hot take but anyways well, it's, yeah, it's, no. it's, it's a nice outcome, you know, because they got the attention without doing any damage. Yeah. Um, you know, so they, they knew they knew that it was it was covered. 
Yeah, but even me personally, I when they say like we knew it was covered, me I'm still like, but well, like how sure were you? <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, I, I all I have to say is like it's pretty ironic that they're a nonviolent group when it's throwing. You could you know you could easily argue that what they did was pretty violent, like yeah. you were in, in, in an act to destroy or to ruin a piece of artwork. Because what if that glass wasn't wasn't like you know uh able to withstand that and the uh the artwork was ruined you know or it, it damages somehow you know, it, you know the, um, the, the, the funny thing is if they know it or not i mean it's an oil painting um it's not going to do any damage to it they could clean it very easily if it yeah, john, john they they talk about how that they, they they knew that that but I, they're saying that after the fact and then that, that it's okay but yeah they really know it that's my well, question I, I still don't think it's okay but you know it's better than you know beating somebody or harming somebody physically and you know yeah. pro to protesting you know people that protest the whole the whole idea is to get somebody's attention for a reason yeah and john yeah. we were talking about that before the live stream came on we're living in a world where it's becoming harder and harder to get that attention it's like kind of really just tragic like all around you're just like well what do you have to do to get your you know 15 minutes of attention um i i don't know and, and you know the full i did read the full premise on like what they said after this and like the whole statement by the organization and it was very much just like you know we understand that everybody values this painting and we understand that the painting has a value, but what's being ignored threatens all art, right? The global, you know, environmental crisis. Um, it's kind of, it's kind of othering their actions though, which is a yeah, really well, convenient, that, that was, you know? that, that's definitely true as well, because you're like, well, now it like discredits that, that movement. You know, it's yeah, like it becomes, it, that becomes was my easy, thing. it becomes like easy ammunition for somebody who's on the fence to be like, well, look at these morons, you know? Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure if, yeah, you know, uh, I mean, I don't I don't know, like the entire situation uh, of it or, you know, uh, but. Oh, you don't I, think my little, I how, how, was, my little rambling of the news story was clear enough. No, it was great. No, I'm just saying, like the the ins and outs of it. Well, you know, I I, I wonder how receptive people were to listening to their message. Like, yeah. I, I think the I think the how they said it kind of sabotage what they were trying to say. Are these the same people that like pied the Mona Lisa? Is this the same group? Uh, I don't think so. No, but I did read about the Mona Lisa pine situation. It's become this has this this has become like a thing, you know, like this has become like a new protest um tool, I think. I don't know. It's interesting that it's it's old, old much older artwork. You notice that? Yeah. Why not well, contemporary? Also, like it doesn't feel very green because they're going to have to use chemicals to clean things to make up for the mess to to make a statement about being greener. I don't know. Too. I think he yeah, just like wiped it off. I think he just like hosed it off, Cassandra. <laughs> <laughs> to use the conservatives' term, a conservationist <laughs> term, I think he just hosed it off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, the surface of oil paint. Uh, okay, <laughs> but like, I mean, what about the substrate? I and mean, what about what if what if someone what if they tripped and ran into the painting itself? You know, like. It, you know, yeah. I'm I'm I, I'm taking the side of the painting on this thing. I understand like their their message. I'm not trying to discredit that. I just think that I for it. me, their actions uh, sabotage what their uh, what their message was. And um, so you're I unusual. just think that yeah. yeah. I, I think they would have been more effective going after a Warhol, but yeah, or a Dolly or a Picasso, in my opinion, <laughs> or a Degas. Like, well, I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying Warhol because of the Campbell commercialization suit. kind of thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think he would have loved it. No. Yeah. Oh, he would have loved it. You're right, Ray. 
I do feel bad. Look how young they look in this. I feel bad. I, yeah. If they had gone after a Warhol with the Campbell soup, then that was, they did their homework. <laughs> they, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But I don't, I'm not a big fan of defacing art, whether it's teenagers protesting um, oil companies or the Taliban destroying Buddhist statues or even people toppling yeah. statues of dictators, although I can't yeah. and, in that one. And to say they're teenagers also, I mean, they're adults that are behind this too, like that, mm -hmm. you know, right. basically facilitated this whole thing too. So it's... Right. It, I feel like if it was a teenager, I think they, they put them in. I think they, all, I don't know. I'm, mean, it's like, I look at the, the first thing I thought was like, who convinced them to do that? You know, uh, right. because now, now their, their, their age is going to be, they're kind of exploited in that, that way. And it, yeah. I don't know. That's, uh, but yeah. yeah not to great I do, I do think it's worth mentioning though, because it's so easy to, to compare it to like, the Taliban or things like that. But in this instance, nothing was damaged. Whereas in all of those instances, things are very actually like are truly purposefully destroyed and damaged. Right. Well, compare it to Greta Thunberg, who yeah, who's speaking very eloquently um, and very purposefully and getting her message across. Although the people that really should be listening to her message aren't because they don't care, because they, they care about short-term gain. Um, but at the same time, she's, some people are listening to her. Well, her name is known, and I think that's exciting. So, right. so the one thing I will say, though, is that in this story, that was a, the fact that those licenses were being given out was largely kind of being, was kind of under the rug up until this, event and now that there is actually much to be read and talked about now so they they've definitely spotlit like it is i guess the real question is is whether or not it is right or the appropriate way of handling it is like one conversation and then the other conversation is did it work did they have an effect yeah well also it, will they be remembered they, for throwing a can of soup or will they be remembered for standing up for something they believe and i think that's what i yeah. think will get muddled i think everyone's going to remember the mm. pie or the can of soup but are they going to remember like what they were specifically doing mm -hmm. yeah okay so here's the the final question if you had to throw a can of tomato soup out of painting <laughs> what what uh what painting would you choose? No, what brand of soup would you use? What brand of soup would you use? Donkey. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say I got I got a painting upstairs that's been driving me crazy that I wouldn't mind checking a couple <laughs> a case at. So yeah. but like a cream of mushroom, it would be extra like goopy. I think it would stick well. I, I yeah. Ray, what the more I think about it, um you're right about it being like an old paint. I think it should have been like a Banksy or something. Yeah. I mean, I get, I, I mean, I, the, it, I get like the target was the, the, establishment um, that is. the target, the target, the target was the Warhol. Right. And the, and cause it's, it, it makes sense that the target was the Warhol. I, I just don't think like, I just, and, you know, to be like, well, you know, nothing was, uh, no, yeah. nothing was was damaged it's just it, uh, then it just makes me feel like it just comes off as selfish then it's just mm -hmm. like okay well you got your message out you could have destroyed this thing at the expense of you know yeah. a, you would have taken something away from people for your own gains and that that's that's kind of how I, I feel about it you know it's like yeah you you're you want to go destroy something for the sake of your own message do you, you know um do you remember the guy that took a hammer to the to Michelangelo's Pieta, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what's the difference? He, what did he destroy the? Oh yeah, he destroyed it. But so it got it got really. The difference is the I mean, he repaired it, but I mean, but intent. Yeah. What was their intent? You know. Um, well, I'm just I saying. Don't know. I don't know enough about the hammer guy. The hammer guy doesn't. I don't know. I, I mean, it, it's really interesting because I've thought about this a lot. And 
I don't know. I grew up with climate uh, anxiety. I know a lot of people who have it. You know, my wife who teaches in second grade, it's like already a thing with her students. Yeah. Um, and it's like a major issue that I do think is really difficult to like, like, I think that right now we're not really talking about like a, the generate, like, like uh, millennials and then especially like Gen Z, who's Gen Z is like their entire lives have been aware of it. Um, I think that they're probably really, I don't know. I, I can understand the depression and anxiety and stress and, and this like feeling of hopelessness. Um, but anyway, I well, agree that these, both these kids seem very well, like, I think quite misguided by adults. The other thing that really bothers me is like, I love going to museums and I love taking my children to museums and these acts are going to complicate visiting museums. That's supposed to be, you know, something that is available for everybody to see. And so there's yeah. a selfish part of me also that's like, you're going to make it hard for me and my kids to see some of these things because now they have to be more actively protected because they're worried about more pies and soups. Hmm. How's everything going to be on the glass? They just fixed the environment though. <laughs> no, um, all right. <laughs> uh, I, I understand what you're saying. I mean, it's like flying after 9-11. It's just like it, things change. Like things have to go into place um, to protect, you know, the overall situation and yeah. You know, Timmy, I, I've grown up with um, the anxiety, I mean, there's been anxiety about nuclear war, there's been anxiety about, you yeah. know, the ozone layer, there's been anxiety about, um, and rightly so, all these things, and I'm not trying to diminish any of these other things, but I think there's always going to be things threatening our lives and there's always going to be anxieties connected to those things huh. and, yeah and the i don't know you know yeah i don't know if they're going to be solved and because i don't have much faith in um, huh. yeah i respectfully disagree but that's okay um i'm gonna move on to our next story um which is I'm gonna say it's good. Oh, I'm glad that you're uh, starting out with a light topic just to warm us up. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm yeah. done. I knew it. I knew it. Yes, this is like it, it is the news segment, but <laughs> it's, it's like hardball. Hard yeah, yeah. So, what do you think about the crisis? <laughs> <laughs> How would you yeah. solve it? Yeah, yeah. Mm. all right. We'll so, paint Dracula and go. Yeah, all right. Yeah, that would be okay. amazing. That's like it's like hot ones, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, exactly. Instead of, instead of hot wings, I'm I'm making you draw while but, yeah I to detail stuff. Oh, P.S. You yeah, should so be far, on second I'm, pose if you're not yet. I just haven't yeah. moved on. Thank you, Cassandra. Everybody, we're moving on to pose number two. Um, please post your first pose to Instagram with hashtag illustration isolation and at visual arts passage in the. Uh, in the the caption um okay our second story um focus on andy warhol and his uh and his uh prince art um so recently the supreme court justices took uh more than much more than 15 minutes to consider andy warhol's silk screens of prince um central to the case is whether the late andy warhol infringed on a photographer's copyright when he created a series of silk screens of the musician Prince. Um, so I'm gonna give some background on this. Uh, in 1984, after Prince became a superstar, Vanity Fair commissioned Warhol to create an image of Prince for an article called Purple Fame. At the time, uh, Vanity Fair had licensed a black and white photo that had been taken by Lynn Goldsmith in 81, when Prince was not well known. Um, the picture was, was to be used by Warhol as an artist reference. Um, Goldsmith, who specializes in celebrity portraits, uh, licensed this 
to Vanity Fair for $400. And the license stated, no other usage rights granted. Unbeknownst to Goldsmith, Warhol went on to create 15 additional works based on her photograph. At some point after Warhol's death in 87, the foundation acquired title to and copyright of the so-called print series. Um, so uh, currently right now, they're just, they're, uh, the Supreme Court is uh, debating over whether or not Goldsmith has right to uh, fair compensation. Um, where's, where's Chris Buck and Matthew Salakus? I, I feel like this shouldn't even be a debate. The photographer deserves more compensation. Like there was a specific contract and like they used it commercially different than way it was intended. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, like you look at both the images and it's, oh, sorry. You're so practical, Cassandra. Well, I'm with you, Cassandra. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, didn't Shep she Shepard Ferry got sued for uh, for for the Obama poster that he had he put up? Yeah. And he, he um, should have been. Yeah. A lot of people. But he, he did. He didn't get. He he didn't get any. Uh, I mean, he didn't get any money for it. Um, like he gave it away for free, and he got sued. Rightly so. Right. So. I mean, well, I mean, this is this is. Uh, I think it's open and shut. Right? Yeah, I, mean, I like, completely agree. At the time, though, people weren't really sure. People were saying, "Oh no, Shepard Ferry, get you know, get behind him because you know he was doing it to promote Obama as president." And so he, he used it to promote Shepard Ferry too. Right, exactly. And um, I thought it was pretty much open and shut too like yeah you use that without permission well also it was confusing I, I feel like when it's done for free right so that I think there's more debate in there versus like that was a blatant like use of the actual photograph and like then he and then they made money off of it right I mean this is this is like the murky area of like you know you can uh, you can go from here to like something like fan art you know i mean look mm -hmm. at what we're doing like what if i did an oil painting that was awesome of this uh uh pay, pay, you know this uh painting of uh, wesley snipes and i use it to advertise my art and you know and i got you know uh someone bought it and you know all of this stuff was happening and from me i mean i didn't pay the photographer of the studio uh for this you know uh, so you think of the same thing um or like even the uh i mean even the um i saw a collage who was the collage artist that back in the day who used um uh a bunch of marvel comics um, back in the day, um rauschenberg or well, not like 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 Lichtenstein and like people who are using stuff from like yeah, oh, Marvel, yeah, like yeah, you yeah. see like oh totally. yeah there's there's a Gil Kane what mm -hmm. what's yeah. what's going on here you know um, and they, their stuff sold for you know no one's ever said anything about it yeah so I wonder I, I wonder what makes this special you know right and I think it's just the photographer yeah. is the one that that fought it you know like uh, well it's a kind know, of an interesting uh, thing because. Like this, this particular, I know it's a, it's got a, its own kind of little caveat. It's uh, this is shot by a studio to promote a movie. And, you know, it's, it's there to make, to, to draw attention and to get, to make, um, and, and create notoriety and fame. Now, a lot of fan art of famous people, you have a lot of latitude with that because that's the, that's, that's the purpose um now making a you know stealing a, a chris buck or uh, a solicuse or well-known photographer and great photographer stealing their work and profiting from it i mean to just draw it and use it in your portfolio or to sell an original painting of it artists have been doing that for a long period of time um right there's it, it, there's different applications you can't get into a commercial application without 
you know, compensating somebody for it. Um, well, also, it's like two contract. He specified how it could be used, and like they broke contract. Yeah. To at the same time, Ray, you get. I'm trying to protect ourselves in here. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. No, no. I mean, we we you know, it's uh, uh like you. This is like a common thing. Yeah. Is what I'm saying. It's like it's so common. And like you, you go go to Comic Con, yeah. and you have people that like make livings off of doing this you know like of doing uh movie posters of, of, of stuff that they weren't commissioned to even do and right you know uh, and selling it and selling prints of that or even selling prints of of uh uh doing commissions of characters that they don't own the rights to you know mm-hmm. uh and i i i wonder yeah i'm just interested to I wonder where this is going to go. Obviously, this wasn't settled quickly because it's it made it to the Supreme Court, right? And so this might might start a a wave of other, depending on you know what the outcome is going to be of this of uh, you know uh, other lawsuits. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. My question also is: is when was this Vogue cover done? Like what year? Uh, so it was Vanity Fair and it was done in the, it was like in the eighties. So is there like a time limit? Is this more of like, they should have filed this sooner kind of thing of like that this was done, you know, 35 years ago. Copyrights last, was it 77 years, 72 years, something like that. Or just more of like, he had 35 years to file a copyright against them and he didn't. Yeah. Um, on that, did you guys hear that? Um, here, I mean, on, on another side of that, there was a designer that was just sued by, I think, it was the Uffizi I, Museum for using a Botticelli. Yeah. I just, I just want to correct. So the photographer is also. I just want to be clear. It, it's. Um. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm looking up the name. Uh, but the photographer is a woman. I just want to be clear. Oh, about. thank you for that. I did not. It's fine. Um, Goldsmith. Uh, I cannot find her first name. Um, and uh, they're going, the issue is really um, going under, uh, the thing that's being called into question is the fair use doctrine uh, mm. in uh, copyright law that permits the unlicensed use of a copyright protected work in certain circumstances. So that's what they're debating. Uh, Cassandra, to what you were saying, I think that they've been fighting this for a very, very long time. Oh, okay. So it's mm-hmm. it's not like a new no. thing that was recently no. filed. No, um, I I remember I sent a link about this to John years ago, mm. um, because and I remember John being like, I think the Warhol Foundation will survive. <laughs> right? Right. Yeah, exactly. You know, I, I think they'll be able to weather this storm, right? Um, which is very true. Uh, but you stole from everybody. Yeah. Uh, so my question is now, if you were looking at like zoom out and if you were, you know, rest in peace, if you were Prince looking at this, would you not be like, you jerks? <laughs> it's, well, it's Prince would have known about it. Yeah. Prince would have known about it. Uh, long before he died. Long before he died. So I, I I'm just sure what he thought. Maybe he, he, him, and Warhol were friends. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder though if like the the state, the the Prince Estate, has any right to step into this. Right. Mm. Because you yeah. start looking at it, and you're like, well, Warhol didn't have the right to like. At a certain point, the licensing is like so off the rails. It's just his likeness in a. You know, in a in a piece of art at that point. I don't know. Interesting. Oh, well, I think but I didn't, uh, you know, cop- copyright's a really interesting thing. I mean, like, didn't, um, I heard, and John, you would know of this story if we if it turned, uh, didn't Ber- Bernie Fuchs get, I-, I had heard that Bernie Fuchs got sued because he was doing, uh, um, it was like a airline uh, advertisements or something like that for, for maybe Hawaiian Airlines or something. And they had 
uh, a scene with the uh, racetracks and people cel- you know, celebrating at the racetracks. <laughs> yeah. And somebody had sued Ber- Bernie Fuchs because uh, they had uh, their wife had spotted their, their husband the likeness in 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 that um oh, I in the advertisement you're, you're pretty close Ray. you're pretty close okay but, but and, the, and the client was he, a whiskey company oh whiskey company right right that's, that's right. What, right that's right, what right, right. caused the bigger issue because the person that was captured that he used was like a total teetotaler but he was also an executive at, an adverti- <laughs> at, at, a, at a large advertising agency and oh um, ray your video keeps dropping i don't know if that's intense. yeah i know the photo- photoshop is uh completely oh, frozen here and i'm uh at the start it. screens got that, a bunch of like that's not the the interest interesting part of that story to me is bernie's is personality it? um the he went to he had to go to court he hired a lawyer and they and the lawyer asked him they said did 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 you photograph this guy at the racetrack? And, and Bernie said, yeah, I, th- I may have. <laughs> he said, I, I, I'm not saying I didn't do it. He said, uh, and, and he said his, the, the, uh, his lawyer told him, he said, well, could you photograph somebody that looked like him and say that was your inspiration? Because this is, co- and this was the, um, um, the company, the lawyer for the whatever liquor company it was. Um, and so Bernie agreed to do go through this whole thing. And, and he actually got, to, you know, he went through the deposition and he actually got called to the stand and sworn in. And <laughs> the lawyer, this is so typical Bernie Fuchs. He was just the nicest, most humble guy in the world. The lawyer asked him, just came out and said, but did you take a photograph of whoever this was, whatever the person, Mr. So-and-so, and use it. And Bernie's only answer was yes. <laughs> that was the end of the whole thing. And so the the uh, company had to pay whatever they were suing him for. Wow. Oh, so the company ended up paying. Yeah, not Bernie. Oh, okay. Okay. I can imagine so, they and, didn't and, hire and, him again. Uh, but, yeah. Did the, so, and, and the, I forgot who told me this, but the, uh the 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 person was upset about it because their he was wife totally against drink he was a teetotaler he wouldn't he didn't, oh he was a teetotaler okay alcohol. so it wasn't it, it it wasn't that their wife was like uh he had told his wife that he wasn't oh that could have been part of it too. Anymore. i mean you think about it he's like at he, he didn't gamble too. yeah like uh, but uh, some of that he 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 had um uh, told his wife that he had stopped gambling and going to the racetrack and yeah the fact that he caught him there you know that part of it wasn't the part that was that obviously makes sense but it was the uh the teetotaler part that that i heard the story from yeah i see well yeah thank you for clarifying what is a teetotaler somebody's against drinking yeah i've never heard that oh yeah Hey guys, gotta I gotta be with the language. I, gotta head out. I just want to all say, right. have a nice evening. Enjoy all the vampires. Cassandra, thank you, you so too, much. You too, Cassandra. For being here. You're missing. You're missing the fun news story. That's light. You're hey, I, light hey, light. I'm just gonna throw this out here. Uh, Cassandra's teaching a class with us next semester. Yeah, I am. Um, and I can't wait. Awesome. Oh, I'm really excited. That's I'm awesome. really excited, guys. Yep. Um, all right, I'll talk to y'all soon. Thank you. Uh, all right, I'm actually going to go to the next the next round. Yeah, on that note, let's all move on to uh, the third and final pose. It's your choice of Robert Pattinson or Wesley Snipes. Um, so please post your artwork up until now to Instagram with hashtag illustration isolation and add visual arts passage. Uh, John, you just mentioned our... Uh, latest program that we're starting. Um, we're starting a commercial gallery art program. Um, we're going to be launching that in early 2023. Um, I'm sure we'll talk about it a little bit, but if you want to get on the wait list, uh, you can right now. I just dropped the link to it in the chat. Um, if you're interested in developing your fine art skills for uh, working with galleries and selling the clients, um, 
I really highly recommend checking it out. That's fantastic. Did we lose Ray? Um, we did, but don't worry about it. John, <laughs> what I let's I was just saying though that that program started off in the first of the year, and uh, well, I was just kind of I was yeah. just going to bring up that Ray Ray is going to be involved in it too. So anyway. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, could you tell us a little bit about what that program is going to encompass? Well, uh, well, the goal is is to uh, demystify from a group of great gallery artists that work for galleries that do that make their living by producing bodies of work to sell in galleries, and uh, it's what I do, what I've done for the last 15 years of my life. Um, it's what Cassandra does. It's what Ray is focused on and many of the others that we'll bring. And we are going to talk about developing, how you develop a body of work, how you develop, help um, assist people with help, helping develop their voice and a look and feel to their work. Um, I like to refer to it as personal voice identity. And then how to identify their audience and who the audience is. And that's gonna be galleries, gallery directors, gallerists. And we even have a commitment from a few galleries right now that are gonna be coming into the classroom, being guest speakers and um, helping us demystify how all of that works. And the goal is at the end of it, that you have the beginnings or an actual body of work that uh, you've developed for that for that purpose to to approach galleries with. Yeah. So for anybody who thinks that's interesting, want to learn more, um, I just recommend getting on the wait list. Uh, there's no commitment. Um, just uh, you can check out the program. It's going to be priced the same as our illustration and character design program. So. Um, if you want to have an idea on pricing that you can view it there. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we're going to be kicking that off in, uh, the last week of January, 2023. So it should be a good one. I'm also pretty excited because, you know, the thing that is, and I, I've thought about this a lot with, and we're not going to go down an AI wormhole, but one of the things that is really, I think, ironic and interesting about the fine arts, especially like in the gallery and collector world is um, gallery art is always gonna be a symbol of status. It's, and it's always going to demonstrate like to have a human created piece of original artwork in your house I, I really do believe it's the one it, it of all arts that are most definitely protected from AI. I think it is, it stands on its own so well from that. Um, so just want to plant that seed. I can't stop, can't stop growing Bella here. It's so good, though. It looks fantastic. I keep working on it, and I'll screw it up. <laughs> Somebody said a painting is like a real life NFT. <laughs> like a real life what? NFT. <laughs> 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 it is. It's like a NFT in person. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's funny. Ray is rejoining us shortly. I had somebody contact me about buying NFTs of a couple of my paintings that they don't That's want the original paintings, but they want NFTs of them. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't understand. I almost guarantee that's a scam. Yeah. I almost promise you that. And just for just for a few hundred dollars, yeah. We'll help you develop that. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's a scam. Yeah. 
All right, I got I got to be done with him. Bill, uh, are you working on uh, Gary Oldman? I am. Any techniques for that wild hairdo? Um, yeah, just make it bigger than you think it it should be, and then pull back from there because it's a lot bigger than you think. Um, but I'm starting with a very light pastel, uh, getting that because it's either that or or put the dark down behind it. Um, so I'm starting with the light just to try to establish that shape um, of the light and I'll, I'll work really vaguely. Um, Bill, you know what I don't do well? Because I don't organize our drawings based on the value of the material I'm using. So I did this black and white with heavy charcoal at the beginning and my hands are totally covered with char black charcoal. <laughs> Now I got to do this really light head. <laughs> it's not going to work. <laughs> it's, I got to clean my hands. No, I'm, uh, Timmy, not to, we don't have to belabor that, but that, you know, doing a, 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 I look at the gallery world as a very commercial thing. And, you know, we refer to, we refer to it as commercial gallery. Um, you know, galleries, their, their job is to sell something. They're not museums. And you have to know how they function, how their business works. And you have to really think about your inventory and how you're um, building a body of work. And you, you have to have a body of work to approach a gallery. They don't want to see a portfolio. They want to see what they can potentially have to sell. Can and I ask a question? When sure. you say portfolio versus a body of work, how does that look different? Well, the, the portfolio would be things that you don't have in your possession anymore. It could just be prints or a oh, digital okay. file of a piece of artwork that you've proven that you've done. You, you have to have that with a gallery to a certain extent, but you have to have a body of work for them to have any interest with you that they can take on as inventory because they're there to sell the originals, not to see if you can do a commission for a new piece. Okay, so I have a follow-up question to that. If, if you were going to be, you know, like John, let's say you were introduced to a gallery and perhaps they're not familiar with your work, so you're putting together a, um, a presentation of artwork to, you know, to get the buy-in, I guess, from them to take you on as an artist. To even, to even show them what you do. Yeah. Yeah. So do you think, would you avoid including uh, paintings that you've sold already? Because potentially they're going to say, oh, we would love to have this. And then well, you're, you you're going to have to say, oh, I don't have that anymore. You can show some of that, but yeah. you, you have to have, you have to have a body of work ready to go to, before you can have a conversation with the gallery. How many, how many, uh, like a, a gallery that can really provide a living to an artist. How many paintings do you think they expect? Somebody. I, I, I wouldn't. Have, I wouldn't go to talk to a new gallery if I didn't have at least six to ten I can hand to them right away. Really? Yeah, because they they would want to you know find a place for you. Want they would want to you know try it out in their gallery to see how their their clientele reacts to it. This might be a hard question for. Uh, on the spot, but how many galleries do you think you've had your work shown at over the years? Mine? Um, no, it's not that hard because I haven't had that many. Um, seven, maybe. And I've been with I've been with two for a long time. And I was going to say, is that is that more just reflective of the you've had good relationships at those galleries? Yeah, but I've also had relationships a couple that didn't work out, um, and I've also had. Uh, both from their end and my end. Uh, big mistake on my end. Um, I spent a lot of time and I learned a huge lesson from this of creating success through a gallery when, uh, um, that uh, a couple different galleries 
just happened to me. And for a couple of years, that's all, that's where my whole focus was. And they depend, they, you know, they pushed my work and they sold quite a bit of my work and they were expecting me to create at a pretty high level. Um, my educational programs got in the way of that. I couldn't produce enough for three or for the three or four galleries that I was trying to hang on to or to sell my work. I couldn't produce enough inventory and still you know, run the illustration academy and you know, but visual arts passage was what it is now. Um, and so I had to, you know, narrow it down. And now I'm kind of, you know, the last year I've kind of really pushed amping that back up. But you have to, you know, they're they're taking their most valuable thing, and maybe not as much as it was it used to be, was the wall itself. Um, like this. Um, their real estate in their gallery is a big part of what you're paying for. And if they're gonna take, make the commitment with you to take, a, you know, use your work and promote you over time and build an audience with your work, they're expecting to have a number of paintings. Um, and I couldn't, I couldn't keep up with, is, with, with four galleries. Um, I can keep up with two. Uh, right now, and I hope to, you know, pursue pursue that more over the next few years. But that's a big part of it. It's your responsibility. Is they expect you? You're the you're the inventory, and they ex they expect you to be able to deliver. And I I couldn't keep up. So, kind of kind of works both ways. You have to really think about their needs and your needs. Um, I've, had, I've had great experiences with galleries and I've had really lousy experiences with galleries. I think, I think most artists have. Yeah. And, and a lot of, uh, and I'm not blaming it totally on the gallery. A lot of it was my, my naivety of not understanding what they needed and what they were expecting from me. I would say that that's probably most artists starting out when they look at galleries is not understanding what it is. Right. You know, I thought I'd do, you know, if, if you get really busy with a gallery, you got a big commitment. You got to, you got to produce. I'm back, everyone. Sorry. I was just going to say, we've got Ray back in the house. Ray, we were just talking about uh, the commercial gallery program we're starting, and, and John was kind of talking about like navigating that as a, as a young artist, as an up-and-coming artist. Did, did you have any resources to help like demystify that, or did you just have to... Like, yeah, they were, they were, I mean, I was around people. No, I, I was asking Ray. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's fine. And no, I mean, I, I just, sorry. I didn't funny. know who you were talking to. No, I, I was just curious, <laughs> Ray, if you had had any experience, like what your experience was getting into that. Yeah, I mean, I was lucky that I had, um, you know, uh, a lot of help just from, uh, uh, from uh, my teachers like Craig Nelson and uh, Bill Mon. I mean, they really kind of prepared me for for the galleries. And I, you know, I said when I studied in San Francisco, there was, uh, you know, I I was uh, fortunate that I had a lot of other um, people that were in my grad program that were a little bit ahead of me uh, that uh, I got to see go through the process of you know at least starting their careers as as fine artists and so uh, well, as gallery I mention, painters i won't mention their names but you had yeah a couple of really successful currently very successful people in front of you that are well-known and very good artists yeah yeah for sure and uh um yeah i mean so they they had 
you know, they, they, seeing them go through things, you know, and um, at the time, I don't know if it's still like this, but there was a, um, it was a small art community. So a, a gallery community in the sense that it's, it wasn't gigantic. So everyone kind of knew everyone. And, and so I, I, I knew you know, there were artists that I knew in, in, in the area, like uh, Eric Joyner and uh, people like Kim Kogan, and Sean Barber and, um, you know, there, there were a lot of artists in, in that that were just getting their start out, start uh, in showing uh, in galleries. And so I was able to kind of watch that and see them. But it, it's it's hard. It's it's a really hard navigating that just just a, the business itself or just even finding a gallery. Because, that you know, just because you're in a gallery doesn't mean that it's, it's you know, you're going to automatically. <laughs> yeah, it's working. Right. And so not all galleries, you know, you have to come to the realization that like your work might be great, but you just might be in the wrong gallery. Yeah. You know? um, not yeah. everyone's going to like your work. And galleries have, it's like, there's, there's not like one consistent business model for a gallery. Um, they, you know, they have different, different, you know, depending on their location and their clientele, how they built their galleries. Some galleries you'll, you know, you fight to get in because their mailing list is so great. You know, they sell everything right. because of their mailing list. There's some that just has incorrect that have great foot traffic. There's some that, you know, there's regional galleries. There's galleries that are tourist galleries. You gotta, you gotta figure out what is it that of, of how that gallery functions, and are you going to be able to fit into that? Right. And and you know, what's the best fit for your work is is always like the. I think the big thing to concentrate on too, you know, it's, you know, you might have a successful gallery to John's point, but like maybe your work just is not, not a good fit for that gallery. So it has nothing to do with your work. It just, you know, uh, it has just everything to do with what, what the collector base is like, you know, the, wrong, Craig right? Nelson. Yeah. I mean, I remember, uh, I think it was Craig that told me one time he, he, he had a gallery. And um, he was not selling anything. And yet, you know, any they tried, they tried, they tried. And this is again, it's it's a mutual, it, it, it's a it's a relationship that you get into, you know. I mean, they're and you both have Craig is a very skin very, in the uh, game, good artist, good painter. Yeah, yeah, it's incredible. And he just it, it wasn't going well, and the gallery was like, Hey, sorry, you know, this is I guess this is not working. So he moved galleries to a gallery that's essentially across the street and he said that he sold everything within like a matter of months i mean we're talking across the street you know and you know, it goes to show you like it's just it's different collectors and um you know that really kind of opened my eyes to like you just you have to be really careful you know um i mean i, I was in you know, when I first got out of school, I was in a, I, I got uh, into a really nice gallery, a really nice gallery in Park City, Utah. And I was shocked, you know, and, and, but I just wasn't, I mean, I was like, oh man, this is great. You know, this is a, a huge, really well-respected gallery. This, my career is going to take off. I sold one piece and I got dropped from the gallery eventually and that happens to everybody um, it happens to everyone right and so i was dejected though like you know because i was like oh i didn't realize and i realized uh, you know upon like further like what happened you realize like oh the work just wasn't look at your work and look at the work that's being sold there it's it's you you weren't you know the work wasn't it the, the it wasn't the right fit it just wasn't the right fit and that's that's totally fine what, and what it's always some, a moving what, target. What are the, some some of the bigger thing, the more interesting things, or the things you didn't know that you found out once you started working in a gallery, working with for galleries, that surprised you? I think the the big thing is like you have to be an active participant in the relationship. It is not passive. At least the galleries that I've been with, you know, it's you have to be. You know, uh, they're not going to take care of everything for you. They're going to push your 
your work and you want them to push your work, but you've got to help them do that. And um, I think the thing that su surprised me, is not just like, oh, it's, it's just, just like, okay, whatever I do is going to be great for them and they'll, they'll take it. You know, um, I found that galleries, you know, you have to ask galleries, okay, so do you like, you know, which pieces do you want out of these like pieces? And they can, they'll usually select what's, what's good for them, you know? And that's the thing that really surprised me was like, you might be selling out a gallery or if you're doing well at a gallery, great, but you might be selling a certain type of work there. And, you know, I, I thought like whatever I did was going to be fine if I was selling one thing or why, why not sell another thing, you know, different type of subject matter um, that I have, you know, uh, cause I do, you know, I'm the type of artist that does everything. And so, um, I realized like, that's not usually the, while, while that's okay, galleries are going to hone in on what's working for them. And just because it's working for them, that's great. It doesn't have to work for you. It just means that you might need to find another gallery that will support the other type of work. And so I have, that's what I have right now. I have galleries that, my more more of my like uh interiors and like um uh i guess like uh, uh like plant like still lives sell better at and then other galleries were like my more architectural landscape cityscape type of stuff sell at uh a lot more and you know um and then others like are a little bit more specific about the location and so you, you have to kind of navigate that. I never thought that that was the case. And that would be, um, yeah, it's like, you, you know, know, something you, that I have to, I, I, I think of myself as a, a regional painter. And depending on where the galleries are, you know, if I, if I'm doing, if I'm sending work to a gallery in Colorado, that's buying my, you know, that's interested in my landscapes, I'm probably going to be thinking about doing landscapes that are from that region um that's what they're looking for they're not looking for ocean paintings or cityscapes or um you know the the clientele is people that come into the town uh it's you know a lot of it's tourists a lot of it is wealthy people that have built you know crazy houses in the in in the town um and they're interested in artwork from that area um yeah and it's again, that's, you know, I found out in, in those galleries in the Colorado galleries, I've had uh, three of them now. Um, the they are. Um, they're dependent on the clientele that come comes to Colorado. And and so I, you, you have to really consider those those things of what their needs are. Um, you know, don't expect to go and you know, change a gallery's business model. You got to do your homework, right. you figure it out. And then you build a body of work that's, that's aimed at that, just like you would, you know, if you want to do uh, book cover work, you know, it's the same thing. You, you know, you better design work that's functional for book covers. How important do you think the salesmanship of the gallery is like, to the success of it? I think every gallery, it, it operates completely differently, right? And- and Well said. I remember I asked, yeah, so like, it's not, there, there's some that have different, everything has a different, every one of them have different relationships with their collectors. And some are a lot more like, you know, uh, passive and some aren't, you know, and, you just, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, what sells and what doesn't sell, you know, it's, it's a, it's a mystery even for gallerists. Right. But like they, they kind of have a good feeling on, you know, how to go about approaching their, their clientele, you know? And I think it's, I think at the end of the day, it's always about one thing I realized was that regardless of how they go about approaching their their collectors and their clients, everything is aimed at building a trust yep. um, because people don't want to feel like, you know, our work's a really personal thing. And so um, they, it's all about building kind of a trust with, with their clients to be like, listen, I'm not, you know, I'm going to give you something that you're going to enjoy. And 
you know, uh, for the rest of your life. And so. Um, well, would you agree with this, right? Is I think the galleries and I think the artists that do really well, um, the galleries sell the artists as much as they do the art. You know, they really, yeah, they're depending on that group of artists to be able to communicate, carry themselves well, um, understand, you know, what their the needs are for the gallery, you know, and again, it's like you're creating inventory for that, for the, for those spaces. And um, you better know what you better have a really good idea of what you're making um, and right. reason for making. Right. So I think, I think they're really, they think about that. I think they think about, you know, finding artists that understand that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I definitely, you see, it's one of those things where like, you have to be, there's certain galleries, you know, if you want to be in like a, a, and this is just my opinion on this, but if you, if your goal with your art, you have to ask yourself what your goal with your art is, right. When it comes to galleries, because there are other, there are galleries, if you just want to do, you know, uh, there are galleries that support just like themes where they they dictate the subject matter and you basically how creatively kind of like an illustration assignment, but kind of done on spec. Right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, like I'm, we're doing, um, you know, I, and I've done a couple of these. Um, we're doing uh, uh, famous artists that have passed away, portraits of famous people that have passed away or something like that. And that's the prompt. And you get invited to do this. And so everyone submits a portrait to that. And it's fun, um, but there's a ceiling to that, right? Now, if you want to be, if you want to have a your own personal voice, your vision, you have to be able to have that honed and in a cohesive, in, in a, with a cohesive portfolio, uh, a body of work. Uh, and and that takes that journey is a whole process to finding that because you're going to get to a point where when you enter into the gallery world you know just because you can you have your you have, you you really your facilities are good doesn't mean that you're going to be a, a a super successful artist you know uh, because there're plenty of artists that can paint apples extremely well you know, or, or a head extremely well. It's, it's really more the question why, and who, you know, how is it significant to you? You know, how do you stand out? Uh, and you have to be, you have to understand, be able to answer those questions um, in your artwork and show that, that you have a, here, here's who I am before, addressing a gallery because at that point you should know that, okay, well, you fit well within this roster and now you can, you can start to establish yourself with your collectors because after that, it's about what John was saying, which is, okay, what's working with this gallery? What type of, what type of images? Because you have to be okay with, you, you know, you have to say, okay, I do this. This is the type of work I do, but this part of the work, this group of, of this type of work that I do sells well at this gallery. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that they get this type of work. And, uh, and because you, and you got to be strategic about it. Um, because if you're not, then, you know, uh, I think that's, I don't know if things could go wrong and, and, you know, a gallery can be a little confused, you know, cause it's all about kind of communication with that, with the gallery, it's a, it's a constant evolution of things. So it's, I don't mean to ramble about it, but it's, it's, it's one of those things that it's like, uh, well, it's, there's, you know, a there's, it. there's a lot to it. Yeah. There's a lot, there's a to, lot it. to it. More than just making the art and right. you, you need to, anybody that's interested in it, really needs to um, take a really investigative, do their due diligence and figure out how it's going to work for them. Um, 
and, and how they can, you know, you can, you can force the issue just by understanding it and, right. you know, understanding how it works is really, really important. Ray, before you uh, got back in the room, I, I kind of mentioned this and I was curious as to what your thoughts were, but when I think of the gallery world and like fine art, co- like the collecting, uh, like the niche of having your artwork collected or being part of collections, I feel like it's one of the corners of the art world that I feel like is truly, would say with confidence, like future proof for quite a long time specifically from technology being able to replace it mainly yeah because it's not about the technology it's about you it's about you the artist right yeah hey but i'll i'll be clear and ray probably doesn't um ray i'm sure knows about it but doesn't hadn't thought about it because he hadn't had to but when i got out of art school that's what i really i wanted to do I, i was interested in drawing and painting but there was no representational galleries. Everything was driven by abstract expressionism. It was very, right. it, was, it was not a popular thing to do. And so over time, so that's Timmy that, you know, that's the thing you have to be kind of aware of is are they, are they doing, am I comfortable as that as art of whatever's popular right now? And I'm not saying you have to do things that, that are, that are popular, but there's genres that it's important to know where your work is going to be effective and sell. Yeah. Um, if they're not selling representational painting, if it, you can't, nobody's buying it or nobody's selling it more than anything, because I think people were willing to buy it at the, any time. Um, you're, you're kind of, you're kind of at a loss, you know, it's like, what do you do? Um, right. so you, you, you just gotta, you, you gotta really, you gotta really treat, treat, you know, the galleries are, you know, in the illustration world, it's, it's, uh, art directors in the gallery world, it's gallerists and gallery owners. And that's, that's who your client is at the beginning. That's what you have to think about. Those are the people that are going to help you maneuver, navigate your career. Yeah. But I, I definitely think that it's it's one of those things that is not. I mean, I you know, I it, it's definitely like a, a like you were saying, future proof in the sense that it's not really affected by technological changes in a way that you would think of being like collected, um, because you know, I'm I'm using state of the art technology of the 14th century here with oil paint, you know, so like, yeah, um, you know obsolescence has has passed uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> my tools for for yeah. a while you know um yeah in terms of it being whatever you know the most efficient uh, delivery mechanism for things yeah when i th- when i say that i guess i think of certain industries and and i'm not even talking about if the technology is there yet or if it's already there or if it's on track to to replace opportunity at any point but it's almost that um is that industry does that industry have an incentive to do to to re, to lean on ai and I, I would say that that industry unless there's like a like a cultural like shift you know mm-hmm. that is kind of unfathomable i don't see that happening right i don't see mid journey going after gallery artists just because i think that having original artwork on the walls in your home is going to continue to be a thing to appreciate even more so i don't say it with the same candor that somebody would say like oh i like holding a book in my hand it's not even like that no no it's it's more like mid journey is not going to get rid of like novel writers or people who write screenplays for movies you know you're talking about is it like when with gallery artists this is the difference between i think one of the big things between this and like another part of an artistic industry where uh uh where you wouldn't necessarily have to answer these questions and that is you're the author of your own work you're the content creator you're the art director you you are 
you know, this is all about authorship. This is your creation. And certain parts of the illustration industry, you're handed that content. And then you're that idea, you know, you're, you're, you're problem solving for that. Um, and you're, you're creating your own content when it comes to something like this. And so, you know, if anything, using, using AI is probably going to be a helpful tool for you to generate even better ideas for your own stuff. You know, you're, you're, you're piloting your own ship, you know, you're your own brand. I mean, you're, you start, you know, it's, that's, that's what this is. It's, it's, you know, uh, I mean, I was interviewed by the AI art community um, or like a prevalent AI art community that um, about this whole thing. And they were saying like, you know, uh, are you afraid for, you know, as a gallery painter? And I said, you know, if people think that my style is a bunch of like colors, you know, and certain types of the way I make marks with the painting, then, you know, uh, the AI is never going to get there. Good luck. You know, it's, it's, you're missing the point. That's, it's not what, you know, you're as an artist, like as me, as a gallery painter, the type of work I do is personal and it's a, it's a collection of my experiences. Right. And so only, I'm the only person that's ever lived my life. And, you know, when you're, when you're a gallery painter, you know, at least it's, it's my, you know, you, you get to pick whatever, whatever it is that you want to paint. And so, you know, you make to, to, to answer that question for yourself is, you know, um, is a hard one. And I think that that's, so this is why it's a whole different type of like, um, uh, uh, type of, uh, um, I guess answer a whole type of thought process, you know, like you're not thinking about how I'm, you have to be able to please yourself first. And then once you, once you've done to, or to, to paraphrase Robert Heindel, you know, you have to entertain yourself. And then once you've figured out how to entertain yourself, you go about and figure out how to, you know, get paid for it. You know, it's, um, so you're, yeah, it's, I hope that, does that make sense? Yeah. It's, I mean, it's really, and, and it, yeah. It, it doesn't, and it's not for everyone either. Cause I know, I know some artists who are extremely skilled, but they can't do personal work without somebody telling them what it is or giving them a prompt or something. They just won't do it. And it's just not in their, 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 uh, their DNA. It's not how they think they just need a, that, that catalyst of like a, a problem to solve. Um, you got, you got to learn to do that for yourself. Right. Right. Well, that that's, that's, but, you know the first the first thing that anybody runs across as a gallery painter is okay what am i going to paint and you have to answer that question well if you want to sell this stuff you better be thinking of the out the, the outcome side of it also it's not just what you want to paint what can you right I, heindel said this beautifully it's when he chose to work to do the dancers to do the ballet it was it was all based on, I think I can paint this subject for a very long time and grow as an artist. And then people will find it interesting. They'll find, they'll, they'll, they'll want it. And you, you got to consider all those things. Um, and you got, you got to figure out how to make all of that stuff work together, but you got to be happy as an art. You got to be happy with what you're doing or else you won't do good work. And, right. but, but, you also have to identify and be smart about it. Who's got, who is going to market this and be able to sell this and work with me to, to, you know, to make my career work. Yeah. It's definitely, it's that two, two part thing, isn't it? Right. It's like, no. like it's a, like, I would never, like, do I think dancers are like incredible? Yes. You know, could I paint? paintings of dancers yeah uh, yeah i could i could give it a shot i could probably do an okay job will it ever be better than robert handel no not really because he actually likes that you know he you know he finds he finds a connection to it you know it's like it's the same way like midwestern landscapes right there's no yeah. no way i'm i'm going to be able to get you know uh, uh 
you know, spirit out of a Midwestern landscape than, than what you could do, John, right? Because you've literally, li- you've been there, you lived it, there's a lived experience, there's all these things that go in and you like doing that. And um, so, you know, once, once you figure that out, which is, takes it, takes time, um, then it's like, okay, I don't want these things just say hanging on my wall. I want them in a, in a place where I can, you know, help, help me, uh, get me more time so I can make more of this, you know, uh, then we have to, you have to start thinking of like, how can I market this? Because if you say, here's my paintings and you just shotgun it, you're never going to get anywhere. Um, and so I think, you know, what, what Heindel did, you know, what you do, what your dad did, you know, he, you found places that support that type of artwork. And that's, that's the thing with, you know, it's the same thing as like um, art directors, like you were saying, you know, you not, not every gallery owner is going to be like, Oh, that's a beautiful painting. You know, that I'm sure the gallery owners that could care less about my paintings. And the, the trick is you find the ones that really like your work and ha- can get you in contact with people who want to, who also like that type of work and make sure that you're, you're focused about that, you know, like, you know, if, if John, like that's the, so what John and, you know, I are saying is like, you can't see with gallery painting, just like with illustration, um, you can't have a body of work. It's not a good idea. Let's just say to say, okay, this is what I do. I do landscapes. For instance, if John did landscapes, John does landscapes. John, a gallery uh, approaches John. Hey, we want to solo, We want to do a solo show with you. John goes, great. It wouldn't be a good idea for John to all of a sudden show up with a bunch of portraits, <laughs> right? And it's, even though John really wanted to paint these portraits, right? It's probably not a good idea because John got the solo show offer from doing landscapes, you know? And so that that's what we mean by like, you have to be strategic of like, okay, this is what they like. I like doing this stuff, right? Which is important. So let's make sure we, we, we align those two interests, you know, because <laughs> otherwise it's just going to be a lot of pain, you know? Uh, I, I, I think that there's a, the, the artists that I've known that have succeeded or are succeeding with it is it's a lot more calculated than that then it meets the eye. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they, yeah. They, they put a lot of serious thought into it and it's, um, it really is pretty calculated. I would imagine it's kind Absolutely. of, like, by the way, this is a two minute, two minute warning on this last pose. And then we're going to ask people to start posting and stuff. Um, so please uh, wrap up your last pose, everybody. Um, I was going to say, I, I would imagine that that world, it's kind of like probably, like getting into like if you wanted to become like a world famous magician it's like nobody's gonna like it's all kind of secret (laughs) like it's all kind of secret it's all kind of hidden and people just like out of nowhere you know just become great at it and it well you know i had somebody i heard this uh somebody say this asked this question that student was complaining man it's so hard i i I've been trying to show my work and get into galleries, but man, it's really, really hard. And they were showing it to, you know, there happened to be more than one, but one very successful gallery painter in the room. And uh, his response was very, I I wasn't expecting it. It it was very kind of tongue in cheek, but he kind of said, well, I'm kind of glad it's that way. And the student said, well, what do you, what do you mean? It's like, do you think it's, he goes, well, because I went through it. It was really hard for me to get started too. <laughs> and they, my guy, yeah. they kind of protect me because of that. Not because just not everybody that can draw and paint can walk in here and start making a living. Um, you know, there's a right. lot of thought that goes into it. And so, you know, his it, point was, yeah, it, yeah, it's hard. And you, you've got, you've got to really deal with all aspects of it. Every comedian I really love say they almost always say that they got their first special a year before they should have, (laughs) you know, like you're not ready for it. And, you know, like 
you don't want it too soon, but you, but you want, yeah. it. you know, everybody wants it to happen fast, but, but sometimes I think yeah. getting what you want when you want it can, can be a problem. <laughs> well, I think also you have to, it is so calculated in a way that you have to understand you have to be able to facilitate or create the circumstances that allow you to create the work that you want. And so you have to think long-term, you know, like this is why what you paint, I think is so important, you know, as important it is for the gallery, it's, it's really important for you because like, you know, I've known artists that have gotten huge really early on in their career and you know in their 20s and then just completely burn out because they don't want to they get stuck because they don't want to paint the thing that they found interesting in their 20s they want to paint the thing that they find interesting in their 40s they're a completely different person and their artwork wasn't set up so that they can grow it was it was just a gimmick you know in a certain sense that worked but didn't allow for growth in that and like you look at somebody like Thomas Blackshear, right? This is, it's a fantastic example of someone who is strategic about creating the circumstances that allows them to do whatever, you know, whatever, uh, multiple different types of interests. And so like Thomas has, likes different types of styles he, and, and he loves Western art. He's doing a bunch of Western art, but it's, he has different ways of expressing that. And he set that up, you know, it wasn't like, Oh, Thomas Blackshear just <laughs> right. John. I mean, like, remember that, that talk he, he, he had, you know, he was yeah, at a studio bridge. If you haven't seen it, it's, it's incredible because he talks about like how he went about doing that. Uh, and establishing was not, that. My, it was not an accident of how it happened. no, no, it was, very, it was not. He's still very calculated about how he's dealing with it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, so. I, yeah. I just want to say, everybody, please start posting your work to Instagram using hashtag illustration isolation and at Visual Arts Passage. Uh, post it now. We're going to go over there in a couple of minutes. Uh, please don't wait. We're going to keep talking about this, but just uh, you got to stop drawing now and start posting your work. Sorry, Ray. No, no, it's OK. No, I, oh, I you know. I have a lot to say because Photoshop keeps freezing on me. So awesome. <laughs> yeah. I have my hands are. It's okay. My pastel keeps freezing on me oh, too. But <laughs> do you, we can answer one last question. Uh, Cause I, I, I think it's actually really interesting. Nicole asked this question, John, it's regarding to the new class, but I, I think you could talk about it just in general, at, like how important it is to artists. So with the new class offerings, uh, I could see the, 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 helping students to find their voice was stated would that mean help someone that does a little bit of everything narrow it down and focus on one yeah thing? well yeah you have to i mean if if say you're say you're good at a lot of things um that may not help you that much in your approach you're going to have to figure out something that identifies you and you know being identifiable as a gallery painter or as an illustrator has huge value of, of you know, being able to make a, a living from it. Um, so, you know, and, and there's, you know, we, we've been folks, man, we, I, I mean, I saw one of the coolest things last night, one of our current, you know, students at, uh, in our program in study hall showed me something I had not seen before from that person, this is a very facilitated artist. And it was like different from everything else that he's ever done uh, in a way. It had bits and pieces, but it was like, okay. And that's basically why he was, was taking the program because that's what he's looking for. He's looking for that thing that maybe identifies him. And he did something that's memorable. Um, he was, he's already facilitated, but being able to do something that when you walk away 
from the gallery or from the art director that they remember what you did. And that's really what you're trying to accomplish as an emerging, as an emerging artist is to become memorable to the ones you want to work for. All right, everybody, the clock's ticking. You're running out of time. Post and work. I'm wasting my time here anyway. So for That's anybody who hasn't, I did I did throw out a poll. So please answer it if if you are interested. Answer that poll and it should disappear. You don't have to look at it anymore. But uh yeah, this is I'm already this is some pretty awesome well, already. Like it, like everything else we've ever done with the Academy or Visual Arts Passage, that we want to deliver a program from people that that's what they do day in and day out. That's how they make their living. And we got a really good start at it. Ray, one of the biggest surprises I had as, a, as when I first started selling work in a gallery is I, I thought I'd price my work, you know, on how I liked it. And I, 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 <laughs> it's not the case. Yeah, but I've been there. I've been there. It's like you establish this, you know, you establish a price for a certain size and everything sold by the square inch. And I was like, what the yeah. hell? I, I would have never guessed. Yeah. That. And I was pretty close to it. Even when I, at that point, it's like, I, but I'd never sold a painting at a, at a, well, I had sold a couple at one gallery, but it wasn't really much of a gallery. It wasn't the gallery I wanted to be in. Right, right. Yeah, I know what you mean by that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, the square inch. Yeah. Like, when I found that out, I was had my calculator out, you know. I was always disappointed by the number, too. You're like, yeah. oh, really? You know, I got to work bigger, man. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. Why I'm doing large paintings right now. Yeah, right. Well, I, I've been going through that in a big way, just going through and like updating my dad's, you know, work at, 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 uh, on his, his appraisal. And, it, it, and it's all, it's all, I'm doing it all with a calculator because I know that it, the painting sell for this much a square inch. And it changes right. a little bit when you're doing a really big painting, you've got to curb it some. Um, because it's or, an, or right. you're doing a really small painting, you got to curb it some because you'll just short right, yourself. Right. right. Yeah, it's it's a it's a very it's concrete, but it's also very fluid at the same time. You know, uh, it's pricing is a really interesting uh, thing, and I was yeah, I was fortunate to have a good good starting gallery. You know, um, or my home gallery, as I like to call it, um, that I really started with uh, my bomb. Well, one of the things, East Aurora was uh, really helpful in that. Ray, that's great that you had a good experience pretty early on. It's like one of the the things I I the first couple of galleries I am were in were not. I didn't have I had an okay experience. Didn't sell very much work. Uh, but I, they got me another, I mean, I got another gallery because of being, I got a, my first good gallery. And the first good gallery I was in, they said, well, you need to, we need to help you find two or three more galleries. And I was shocked that right. they even said that. And, and, and their purpose was, it's like, well, we don't want to be responsible. You know, you're making your living just from us. We want it, you know, you're going to have a better opportunity if you have two or three other galleries that that can support you completely, then you got to be able to produce at a pretty high level to do that. And I thought, right. wow, these people are, yeah. they're serious. <laughs> and, and they, right, they, right. Helped, they helped me find two more galleries, good galleries. That's great. Yeah. That's great. All right. Are you guys ready? Yeah. 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 Sorry. We could, I could talk about Let's this. All day. Just gonna, yeah, this is know, great. You guys, everyone's oh, going to be gone. We're still going to be talking. Yeah. No, uh, somebody, <laughs> in the chat, somebody in the chat said this has been a master class on that topic, but that's not true. The master class is the class John and I are enrolling for. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get anything. <laughs> right. You think this was good. Yeah, exactly. This is awesome. I love that. The hair is great. That's great. Heart shape. That's like a Valentine's card almost. 
Um, <laughs> Very nice. Stabby, stabby. <laughs> <laughs> that explains the movie. Yeah. Love it. Oh, nice. That's great. I should have done the Bell Lugosi. Yeah, you know, I really enjoyed doing it, but man, it was hard. I mean, it was really hard um, because it, yeah. it's such an odd angle looking down at him like that. And his eyes are like just little lines when you look at him. Yeah. I, I, oh, that's fun. Though. That's great. That's yeah, well see, that's what I could. And I've, I've painted that that reference or drawn from that reference before, too. So it's like an old friend. You know? <laughs> Some great that's stuff. really that's nice. Great. <laughs> wow, that's great. That's good. I just can't get over that wig. It's just absurd. It's funny. Is it cool though? It's like you know. Oh. I don't think it is, but <laughs> no. Very I well think done, it looks Sienna. nice. One, very nice, Sienna. That's, that's, that's really great. well done. Much better than mine. Ooh, I love wow. that. There it is. Hey, Ron. Yeah. Nice one. Oh. Nice one, Chuck. Nice, Ooh, Chuck. Nice. Oh, wow. really good. Uh, Again, I'm going to mention it. I just love, you know, posting. A, we were talking, Audrey and I were talking about you. We're sharing the same reference. So many different creative directions come out of it. You got a room full. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people in the room tonight and so many creative directions. It's fantastic. I love this one. Blade. Oh, that's cool. There you go. Blade might have the coolest hairline for receding hairlines in a movie. <laughs> it's very aspirational, at least for some of the yeah, like that may or may not be experiencing. Do I have uh, the blade this. hairline. <laughs> we should compare notes. I definitely don't. <laughs> that's great. That's See, that's a nice. That's a really nice simple treatment on that. Ooh, that's oh, that's great done. too. That was the easiest one to draw for me, was, was the blade. Maybe because the shape of the head was yeah. so simple. I love that. Profile. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> yeah, these are nice. But the blade was crashing my Photoshop, so it was the hardest one to draw. <laughs> yeah. No, that's good drawing. Yeah, it can't work at least. great. I like that hand. <laughs> That's a nice, simple treatment on that. Yeah. You know exactly what oh, that is. really dude. difficult to get a likeness with line. Mm hmm To somebody who didn't attend tonight, they're going to be like, they drew three vampires and like a hunky boy. That's a really good one. Yeah. That's nice. That's wow. Nice. Very nice. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Is that on jeans? Oh, that's interesting. Oh, whoa. It's like your roommate's pants tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and no, no, I think it's on. Uh, that looks like it's on transparency paper. Yeah, acetate. Oh, I don't know. Uh -oh. Acetate. Yeah. Did you know that's, that nice. that's great? That's well there's, done. There's a painting of blade on your butt. <laughs> Even like the, the the type that they put on that one. It's really well done. Yeah, yeah. Someone that knew what they're doing. That's a good drawing. Oh, fun. Fun. There I like go. that that one, they did the paleness really well. That's fun. Good job. Oof. That's fun. Yeah, that's a great one, too. Well, maybe I should recalculate what I say because everyone did a great job drawing Bella. <laughs> 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 it was just me that had a hard time with it. Cool. Yeah, listen, John. I was going to let you just as a learning experience because I think I said that a couple like last Ooh, Peter. a couple of episodes ago. That's great, Peter. I said something about a neck or something like that, and everyone nailed the neck except for <laughs> me. You know, huh. very nice drawing. You're great. Well, I was I that's, was committed to nice. to really focus and do a good job of Bella because I bombed it really bad this morning. Oh, well done, hey. Peter. Oof. Oh wow. I love the color highlights on that. That's cool. Yeah. Sparkle, sparkle. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Those are awesome. Some good drawings of Bella. Tonight. There's some good drawers in here. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. Yeah. Good Peter, man. Went through the Pete, the Pete filter. 
Yeah. Yeah, I just went three for three. Nice. There you go. <laughs> That's a good one. Ooh, nice. Nice. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff. Good job, Jeff. That was fun. Uh, oh, well, nice. That's fun. Yeah. Ooh, nice job. Oh. <laughs> crazy some new people this is awesome yeah this is great yeah thanks for joining us everybody hope you hope you enjoyed it hope you enjoyed it also if people run into fun news stories there go sally that's my cousin <laughs> drawing This is great. Wow. Oh. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's that's really well done, actually. Nice. Um, there you that's go. Very well done. Ooh. Wow. How's this that? Yeah. Back to back ones too. That's great. <laughs> very nice. Wow. That's awesome. People are like, they drew vampires and then like a boy band. <laughs> <laughs> well, I replaced, uh, I took uh, Kiefer Sutherland out. Um, Which I think was a good call. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to put Brad Pitt in, but we drew him this morning. Bradley Pitt would have been nice. Yeah. I don't get tired of him. Uh, Audrey did a killer job of Brad uh, of Brad today, and I, I I tried to change him around too much and put myself in a terrible spot. He swapped him out through through in uh, that guy from BTS, right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh man, these are great. That's great. Wow. That's nice. Very nice. Oh, that? That's another hey, one, Julian, Julian man. Hold on. Back. Oh, Julian, killer. That's cool. That's, that's great. Look Ooh, at that. Another Julian. Yeah, Julian, man. <laughs> I love that. That's great. <laughs> love it. Those sunglasses are coming back. They are, man. The Gary. He's drawing Gary. Wow. Gary, Gary, and Julian, I wish your your pens uh, <laughs> crashed. <laughs> I love that one a lot. Yeah. I do too. You do. Oh, like that too. Uh, you see yeah. that? Sick. I, mean, I should have just done that. Yeah. Get yeah. to the point oh, right away. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. nice. See, and a nice one. That is it? A lot of healthy competition in that family. Chuck and Sienna. <laughs> cool. Oh my goodness. I didn't even draw this. Oh my, they're related. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's the, Chuck Sienna's dad. Yep. Killer. Wow. <laughs> That's fun. Robert. That is great. They okay, should have done that. Cool. Done. Bobby That's Pat. great. Ooh. Nice job. These are awesome. Uh, I was waiting for that one. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, maybe well, Gary took saying, one off. I know it's coming. <laughs> hey, he took one off. You know, that... <laughs> took one night off. Yeah. Oh, that's, oh, that's cool. Look at that one. <laughs> Jeez. That's really cool. <laughs> That's fun. Wow. Oh, that's <laughs> there we go. Great. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Oh, lovely. I know who that is. Hey. Felicity, yeah. Yep. Age 11. Yeah. Gosh, she was only eight when we started. Oh, it's amazing. That's crazy to think. Ella Lagos. Nice. One of these days we're, we're going to hear, oh, uh, Felicity's not here. She's taking her driver's test. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> that's gonna be. Oh she's she's in college. I yeah. Just but it's a... Wow. Nice. Wow, we're all good. gonna wait. We're all gonna drive her to college, right? That's gonna... that's right. Yeah, yeah, we're all gonna yeah. teach her how to drive. <laughs> yeah. Mostly couldn't make Virginia. it. Just taking the bar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's gonna be drawing, and and we're not gonna be able to make it. Yeah. Right. This is great. Oh, nice. Cool. That's fun. Really nice too. Right. I knew that was Chuck's. Ooh. Oh, AJ. Oh, AJ. I didn't think he was here. Damn it. Yeah, I guess his <laughs> computer didn't crash. Kind of wish it did. <laughs> oh, nice. Cool. Nice, Aaron. That's a fun one. Too. That's great, too. Yeah. There's a lot of really good ones. Yeah. Play. People were, man, they were on fire today. Holy. <laughs> that's terrific hey, nicole. that's great that is killer nicole i love that wow nicole hit it just hit done that home run this morning too really nice <laughs> jocko kid i like that that's cool oh that's so awesome i love that that's great so is that i was like a murray tinkleman the previous one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice one. That's fun. Yeah. <laughs> I like the hand. Oh, wow. That's really nice cool. one. Yeah, that's Wow. Cool. Look at that. Ooh. Nice design. Wow. wow. Somebody drew the hand. <laughs> yep. That's a, 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 the second person that's done that. Yeah. That's the hand. <laughs> oh, nice. These are great. Drawn and quartered. Oh, oh that's, that's awesome. Great. I love that. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, that's well, really great. Up to have someone. That's like a, that, that would be a good poster for us. Yeah, that's awesome. Very that's cool. awesome. Love it. Oof, Mike, nice drawing. Oh, cool. Sweet. <laughs> the stretch that sketcher. Stressed out sketcher. Hopefully we didn't stress you out more. That's right. Well, if you worked on paper that wasn't so wrinkled, you may not be so strange. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I really love that paper. That's another nice. one. That's great. Very well done. Love it. Well, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool, too. I love that texture. That's nice. Damn, a lot of people drew tonight. This is great. Oh, nice one, Nicole. Hey. Yep. There's another one, yeah. Ooh. Oh, that's a nice, one, nice one. Love Eon's junk. I don't know your real name, but <laughs> <laughs> interesting name. Yeah, Eon's junk. Big fan. Uh... These are great. Now oh, that's fun. I like the shape of that. Good, good, good caricature there. Uh huh. <laughs> there. Nice. It's great. Hey. Nice, Gina. <laughs> cool. It's got to be like a There you go. Yeah. That's fun. That's acetate, right? That looks like acetate. I thought it was dry erase, but yeah. Oh, could, is it dry erase on acetate? Well, I don't know. Either way, I should have done that. It's cool. <laughs> I should have done that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stealing it. Yeah. On. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Holy, there's Ron. Nice job, Ron. Sweet. Ron, I owe you a phone call. That's great. DK Spencer. I'm not an owl. <laughs> Love it. These are awesome. Wow. That's well done. Oh, I like that. Oh, that's a great one too. Yeah. Love the, the, the line in that the previous one. Really well done. Yeah. Amazing. Job. Got their black wing. That style is so cool. I love that. That's great. 
This must be a record number of people who posted tonight. It's really high. It's really high. Yeah. Good job, everyone. Yeah, it's incredible. Thank you very much. Guys, yeah. I'm Katie, wow. so I'm going to fail. Oh, okay. thank you, Bill. No better, Bill. Thanks for hanging with us, Bill. It was very helpful. Oh, this is amazing. Go get some Those Iron Man. Yeah. Above and beyond. Whoa. Wow. Fine. <laughs> Jeff did like 12 pieces. <laughs> yeah, this is unbelievable. We're going to have to figure out. I can think of it. Yeah. Nicole, too. That's great. Yeah. Another nice one, Nicole. All right. Are we, th are we done? Nicole gets wow. to do the final image. That was cool. All right. That was Good awesome. one to leave on. Thank you, everybody. That was terrific. Ray, Cassandra, Bill, Timmy. I uh, really appreciate it. And I hope you all had fun. And we're going to be we're going to still be doing Halloween theme for next week, too. So yep. don't know what it's going to be yet. Yes. And it's going to be fun. If you got a theme idea, drop it in the chat on illustration on Discord. And uh, yeah, we'll consider it. We might yep. we might use it. We might not. So. <laughs> Thank you for spending your Thursday right. evening with us. I appreciate right. it. Have a nice night. Thank you, everyone. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye.